Hi everybody, it's Dystopian Wars Week here at On Tabletop, and we have two amazing prizes up for grabs. Our first prize is the Sturgenium Skies two-player starter set. For your chance to win, get your comments in on YouTube. Our second prize is the Hunt for the Prometheus two-player starter set. The winner for this prize will be chosen from comments on ontabletop.com. Hello everyone and welcome to Three Colors Up. In this one, I'm going to be tackling from the Sturgenium Skies two-player starter set, the Stark Imperium Sky Fortress. Uh, I've painted it roughly following the box art, uh, and I believe the box art uh, represents the Prince Eugen, one of the, the big uh, ships in that fleet. And I will warn you, there is a there is a bit of airbrushing in this one. There's an airbrush pre-shade step, which didn't really work out, so you can Watch that to see what pre-shading looks like, but it doesn't really affect the outcome of the miniature in the end. So that's my bad. I hold my hand up there for um, making my own mistakes and not learning properly. So we'll do it proper next time. But what we do get in the end is a very intimidating, brightly colored, high contrast miniature that is going to look great on a big sea map with all your fleet laid out before you, ready to crush your opponent. So without further ado, let's get down to the table and let's paint it. Okay, so our first step here was to prime our miniature, and we've primed that with um, Green Stuff World's Matte Black uh, Airbrush Primer. Well, we've put it through an airbrush. Uh, that has given us a nice smooth finish and really shows off the detail uh, of the model. Tons of it. So with this being more of a centerpiece out of the box set, I thought we'd, we'd go a little bit further with this uh, than, than usual. So we're going to be moving on in our first stage here to a uh, highlight or appreciate and we're going to be using some airbrush surface primer white surface primer this is Steinal res but um, any basically you could even just use a, a white paint and i have this in my airbrush which is thinned uh, uh two to one two in favor of paint so more paint than uh, thinner i uh, just want to make sure it's working which it is and what we're going to be doing is picking out details that we want to remain sort of highlighted so for example Across the top of the, the cross here, we have this large rectangular panel. So we're going to do that. So something like that just to pick out these panels. So we're going to be doing that along the rest of it. And just going along each of these panels that we want to keep and just hitting it with a different amount of white because we don't want it to be a solid white we want it to have a bit of fading and stuff in there so for example a better test of it would be on the back here on our back quarter so let's try up here And what you can see we're doing is we're making a bit of a hot spot in the center of the panel and letting the, the airbrush naturally feather that paint out towards the edges of the panels. That should look interesting when we start applying washes and stuff later on. So we're going to go around the rest of the miniature and just pick out these little spots and then we'll show you what it looks like. So as you can see our appreciate is now done. Tons of uh, detail to point out there and just to, to get going and have a look at. So it's going to look, hopefully, pretty interesting once we put our next color down. 
which will be the main color. And because I'm following more or less what the box art is, we've got a sort of sky bluey steel sort of color. So for that, I decided to go with Scale Color Cobalt Alchemy. It's a nice metallic blue and it'll run well through my airbrush, which again, it's thinned roughly two to one in the pot. And it should give us the color that we're looking for. So let's see what happens. We're gonna give it basically all over the, the model. So you can see roughly what we're aiming for here. We've got a nice sort of sheen building up. It's probably gonna take a couple of coats to make that really look effective and hopefully not destroy our appreciating in the process, but we'll continue on and see how we, well, the sort of results we get afterwards. With our cobalt blue down and dry, you can see it's sort of practically eliminated all our pre-shading yet again. It's still present in places, but the effect is so subtle. The metallic nature of the paint um, really works to cover it up. It's still present in places. You can still see it in certain locations, but overall, probably a step you could skip, but now we know. <laughs> so if I come to paint the rest of the fleet like this, then I think we'll skip the pre-shade step or maybe just make it a bit more of a general sort of white upper, black lower sort of thing, maybe a bit of a fade across the middle, something like that. Anyway, we're gonna move on to a little bit of a dry brush step here. And for that, we're gonna be using Runefang Steel. Uh, we're gonna be doing that because we want to highlight this blue metallic. And the only real way to highlight a blue a metallic paint is with, well, another brighter metallic. So we're moving from a blue tint <coughs> to a, a standard sort of silvery uh, white tint. And because Runefang Steel is probably one of the brighter of the metallics, it's just going to work better. So I'm just gonna get my brush ready here. I had to stir the paint a little bit because it's been a while since I've used this pot in particular. So let's just get some of it mixed up. And we now have this new mat, which is kind of cool. I like using this mat. And it's gonna be a case of making sure most of the paint is off the brush as per our usual dry brushing approach and on the model itself just going to work the runefang steel over some of the surfaces just to catch some upper details and just to highlight certain parts of it particularly the ribbing there we if we make that more of a silver then that gives us a bit of a contrast to work with. I'll just work over the whole lot. It doesn't matter if it comes out a little bit rough, just looks a, a little, at this scale, it's a bit sort of scrapes and bumps and knocks. So it's not too, accuracy isn't the most important here, but it does let us break and add some contrast with a bit of silver. With that done, we can now see we have a little bit of contrast building up here between our sort of blue steel, as well as the more silver uh, for the little bit of highlight and catching some of those details. We're now gonna move on to an ink step. And for this, we're gonna be using uh, Scale Colors Ink Intensity Intense Black. This is going to be used for panel lining and for generally making a mess of things because that's what we like to do with inks. We just make a massive mess. So. For example, we're going to try a little bit of panel lining here on this one. And there's plenty of detail to get stuck into on this, so it's going to be quite a long process. But for example, we want to be putting our black into these quite large panel lines, to be fair. Some of these are quite intense. So I'm going to run them into that. And because all our metallic steps have a glossy sort of finish, it tends to run quite nicely in through all these panel lines. So just going to take our time and just panel line the miniature and see what we get after that. 
So with the black ink now down into all the, uh, the areas where I want a little bit of shading, we can see we've got a bit more definition now in our model. So from there, we're going to start a long and laborious process, which is painting gold, because there's going to be a lot of it. And because I'm, again, I'm following sort of the box art, I wanted a paler gold. So for this one, we're going to be going Liberator Gold for this one, so another Citadel color. And again, this is a paint that I haven't used in a while, so a little bit of a shake and a stir ought to bring the paint back to life. And this will be a long process, guys, so we're obviously not going to show much of it. Um, so what I'm hoping to achieve here is to get as close to the, the box art as possible. So we're going to be painting stuff like this big crossbar here, all of this sort of edging, and just working around the model and picking up as much of this as possible. After that then obviously we're going to have to start shading it down a little bit, but not too heavily. And yeah, we'll see where we go from there. With our Liberator Gold now down and dry, you can see just how big a difference that makes to a model that is a fairly light color. And it really gives this big airship a sense of presence. It's really regal in its own way, but it shows a lot of the shape and a lot of the detail more accurately. So what we're going to be doing from here is shading this gold down a little bit. And for that, we're going to be using Cryptek Armor Shade, which is a sort of a, it's a kind of a heavy wash, but let's see if we can thin it down a little bit. So let's have a look and see what we can do. So we'll thin it a little bit. And then I think we're just going to work with it and see how we get on. And it should just sit nicely in amongst all these rivets and let it sink into those details a little bit too, shade those down. And it's not going to kill the vibrancy of the gold, which is very important, but it is going to give a little bit more weight, a little bit more depth. So it's going to be a matter of going around every piece of gold we've done so far and just giving it a little touch of this and you can see there how it just helps aid the effect a little bit more, settles it all down. So again, not going to be hopefully as long a process as actually painting the gold because the gold took quite a while to be fair. I think I, I measure my success in cups of coffee and I've had about uh, three during the course of painting the gold. <laughs> Not um, not the best measurement for that sort of thing, but that's how I do it, which means I'm a terrible painter. That's fine. You should stop watching right now. <laughs> so again, we're just going to go over the whole model with this stuff, pick out all our gold and shade it down. With our wash now down, you can see that our gold has become a little heavier, a little more rich has a touch more depth to it, so it's all looking pretty good. Now we're going to take a step away from the metallics for a little bit. There's a, a few steps I want to do uh, before we go back <laughs> to some metallic work. And the first thing I want to work on is the flight deck, because the flight deck is definitely one of the big standout pieces of this miniature, apart from all the gold trim and the giant crosses and stuff. So what I want to start with is Vallejo model color German pale brown. And that's going to be the base coat for our flight deck. So I'm going to put a bit of that down here. Um, if you're wondering why I'm throwing paint onto my um, down here onto my table, it's because I'm actually using a, a silicone mat, which um, Green Stuff World now produce, which does act a, a bit as a palette. So works for me. I don't need a wet palette because none of this is particularly uh, a long process. So we're going to start base coating the flight deck. And I'm doing this now because <clears throat> later metallic steps will tidy it up by doing all the edging uh, in another color. So we're gonna get this base coat down. We don't need to worry too much about our edges or how neat we need to be. Once we have this done, we're then gonna move on and start to pick out a few little uh, different colors in the flight deck because I find it's more interesting, although less, less accurate, I guess, 
to pick out different uh, planks uh, in slightly different colors. I think it worked well on the Ice Maiden, if any of you guys watched that vlog in particular. I think the Ice Maiden's flight deck really became a sort of standout feature of the miniature. Not because it was a dominating large section, but because it was more visually interesting with the, uh, the different variations in the color. So we'll get this down and then I will briefly go through the different colors for the other planks of wood. So with our pale brown now down and dry, the flight deck is looking pretty decent. It's a good, a good slab of matte color on top of all the, the metallics that we've done so far. We're gonna move on to adding some variation to our flight deck now with two more colors. So the first one is flat earth. That's not a representation of my opinions on the shape of the planet. <laughs> and beige brown as well, both Vallejo model colors here. So all I'm gonna be doing is just putting a drop of each, hopefully, ah, too much. People always complain I waste a lot of paint. I am sorry for those that think that way, but you're probably right. So as you can see, those three colors together are gonna to add just a little bit of variation to our wood planking. Not too much though. And all we're gonna be doing is just picking out the occasional plank and just adding a little bit of this variation into the overall color. So it really isn't much, but it will just give us a little bit more interest considering that we're gonna be looking at these models primarily from the top down. So we'll just pick out the planks in these two, two other colors and then after that we'll give it a wash just to settle it all down. So with all the colors on the decking now down and dry, you can see we've got a little bit of variation built up there, which is fine. It only takes a few minutes to do and just makes it look a little more interesting. We're now gonna wash it down with a little bit of Agrax Earth Shade. And then after that, we're gonna move on to uh, a more, well, a couple more detail steps. So I'm gonna take a bit of a bigger brush here this time. And we're just going to um, pretty much just slap this on because it shouldn't be too bad. So. Just a case of getting our Agrax down, letting it work into all the little lines. And we don't need to be too neat. With the Agrax down on our flight deck and drying, it's looking quite interesting from here. So now we're gonna move on to returning to some of our uh, white surface primer here. And we're gonna be using that on the symbols. Uh, we're finally gonna be attacking all the, the crosses and stuff like that. So just using the white surface primer because it's nice and easy. And what we're gonna be doing is tackling the likes of the shield. We're just gonna paint the whole shield in. And this may require a couple of coats of this just to make sure it's nice and smooth and that it's a good solid color. So we're gonna do this. Let's get that first coat down. Once it's dry, we can revisit that. And then on the two big crosses on either flank of our airship, we're going to be painting the outer band. So we're going to be painting this part here. You wanna be careful at this point as well that you don't go over the edge and onto the blue. It doesn't matter so much if we go into the center because that's going to be going on that black. You just wanna take your time with this part. Make sure you don't get into the hull color too much. If you do, it shouldn't be that big a deal to go back and just tidy it up again. But it's always good practice just to stay within the lines. With our white down, we can now return to using some matte black. And again, we're just using our matte surface primer from earlier, and we're now going to fill in our crosses. So again, same process as applying the white. We just want to be very careful not to go over the edges. 
and just slowly fill in our crosses. So that's kind of what we're aiming for on the sides. Like that. On the front, on our crest here, again, same sort of process. Just be very careful. You just take your time with it as much as possible. And we'll work that in there as we move along. Now, the one on the top, <clears throat> because it's a recessed detail, we can afford to be a little less careful with this one. So what we want to do here is water the paint down a little bit more and basically let it fill up that space. That way it should be nice and even and we might need a little bit of cleanup afterwards. But in general, that's all we need to do with that is just fill in that space. And if we feel like we need another coat, and it's not too hard. So that's the stage we're going to be at now. Now, <clears throat> I'm also going to do the following step off camera as well, just to save us a little bit of time. And what that's going to be is painting in the edges of our flight deck and our other deck um, detailing. And for that, we're going to be using lead belcher. So the air lead belcher, because it's a nice smooth paint. So that is going to be painted in uh, on our gun turrets right down to this collar here. We're going to avoid all these side details but we're going to paint basically everything else on the flight deck. That way we've got something that looks very imperious from from the side but has a little touch of a more heavy industrial side or an industrial aesthetic on the top. I just wanted the difference in the metallics to, to reflect that this is a machine of war rather than just a machine of prestige. Um, so once the black crosses are done, I'll be doing this and then we're going to come back and uh, see where we need to go from there. So as you can see, the black is on all the crosses. I almost forgot the tail crosses, but there it is. And I've also put on my metallic lead belcher on the top of the flight deck. It's a nice way to make the thing look a little more heavy, have a touch more presence than just have a lot more gold. So a little bit of variation uh, works out pretty well. And all in all, this model is going to really stand out on a table, which is fantastic. Now, we've got a couple more things to do and then we're almost done. So what we're going to move on to now is a coppery color. And for that, we're going to be using Vallejo Game Color Brassy Brass, which is a, a fun name for a, a paint that, you know, is definitely more copper. As you can see there's just, that's blocked. So don't forget, poke a pin down that if it's ever blocked. There you go. <laughs> um, this is going to be for the weaponry. Now there is a little bit of weaponry and a few copper details I want to, to cover here. So we have, for example, up here on the prow, all of this. This entire piece of the nose is going to go copper. All of that. Then we have a few more electrical components up here. So we have this secondary coil here as well as the center bit. And then we're going to do all of that in copper. And then we're going to pick out a few other little bits like some piping along here. So these little pieces right here. So that's the next step. We're going to do all that in the copper. When we come back, we've got two wash steps, which will be, to, well, we've one wash step, which is going to encompass the lead belcher we've already put down and the copper that we're doing now. And then a couple of little things. And that's basically going to be the miniature finished. Uh, we will talk about the base and we will paint the base, but we'll do that off camera and then describe the process uh, at the end. But for now, we're going to focus on getting our copper details painted up. With our copper now painted down, you can also see I've done a little bit of work on the base. So the base is basically our black surface primer that we've used before, dry brushed with our white surface primer, and then the contrast Talisar blue over the top. I've also edged the base with black and painted the flight stand black as well. So 
that gives us this really nice sort of oceany sort of look. The way you could enhance it if you feel like it is maybe taking a little bit of green ink or if you have a glaze or something like that uh, that's maybe more of a turquoisey colour and putting it over the top of that even onto the talisar while it's still wet that would also work but we're not too worried about that we're going to focus on the miniature. So two steps left well three steps left two of them I'm going to show on camera. Um, our first one here is to take some null oil and we're going to null oil all the metallic parts that we've just painted so including our copper and the lead belcher that I've done on the flight deck. So that's our first one so we're just going to crack that open and we're going to get to applying it make sure it's okay that there isn't too much water on my brush seems to be all right and then we're just going to be applying it over every metallic part that we've already done. This again just helps dull it down a little bit, makes it look a bit more industrial, a little heavier. And what we can do as well, because in certain places I have gone over where I really want to be, and what we can do is just on the edge of the decking is just run it along that edge because there is a lip in there and that'll help darken it and define the edges of our flight deck a little bit more too. Don't be too overzealous at this stage, you don't want to ruin anything you've already done, but it just adds a little bit of extra shade in there for those parts. But we're going to go ahead and do that. Also with the turrets, we just want to give the entire turret a good coat of the null oil. Like so. So once this stage is done, once we've put the null oil onto everything, the, the model is going to get an airbrush coat of some varnish. And for our varnish, we're going to be using Green Stuff World Satin Varnish. I think we recently got some of this. I wanted to give it a go. That way we're sealing everything down. We're making everything tidy look. And um, hopefully in the end up, we'll get a nice finishing result. And then after that, there's going to be one more step where we're going to tackle a few viewports and stuff like that and then our model will be complete. With our black wash down, everything given a, an airbrush coat of that satin varnish, we are now ready for our final step. But what have we got so far? Well we've got a very intimidating looking airship and I think everything has settled down very nicely, looks great, nice and bright very big model as well so it just it's really going to stand out which is fantastic so our last step is to do a little bit of glass in some of our windows and such and for that we're going to be using soulstone blue just because it's nice and it's easy and i wanted to do it last because it'll have a gloss finish on it and i kind of wanted something to have a little bit of a different texture here beyond the the satin finish of everything else so taking our soulstone blue and for example, up here on our flight deck control, just into these viewports. Like that, we'll go a little bit heavier if we want as well, just to make it a bit more dark. So something like that. It's just another detail to add that just gives us a little something. And then also we can do the canopy on the aircraft on the flight deck, which I believe is somewhere, just tidy up the end of my brush there, just a little bit there. And we'll, we'll bring it back one step as well, just to emphasize that we have given that plane a little bit of attention. Not a lot, but we have given it some. There and there. So we'll do the rest of the windows and then we can wrap the video up. With our windows all painted in, we have now completed our big airship. And oh my goodness, does he look intimidating. It's fantastic. I love how the, the blue steel eventually turned out. I know my pre-shading didn't work uh, 
so you're going to have to ignore that. I'm probably going to have to say that in the intro as well. <laughs> um, but all in all, we've got a vibrant, industrial-looking machine uh, that, you know, the, the basing's fine too. <laughs> the basing looks all right. But it would be nothing without this monster of a miniature on top of it. I think the, the contrast between the gold, the blue steel, the black and the white on the symbology just works really well. Plus having a bit more of an industrial look on the top with the flat guns and the, the decking and stuff being a bit duller, I think works really well. So all in all, I hope you've enjoyed this one and I hope you um, you look at this a little bit and go, do you know what? I might give that a try myself. That would be great. Um, obviously, don't worry about the pre-shading part. I think the black primer would have done us just as well uh, considering we airbrushed the blue on and it worked out fine. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this one because I really enjoyed painting this one. And uh, until next time, take care, stay safe, and I will see you again very soon. Hi, everybody. It's Dystopian Wars Week here at On Tabletop, and we have two amazing prizes up for grabs. Our first prize is the Sturgenium Skies two-player starter set. For your chance to win, get your comments in on YouTube. Our second prize is the Hunt for the Prometheus two-player starter set. The winner for this prize will be chosen from comments on OnTabletop.com. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.